Game of Thrones was welcome back into all of our lives on HBO last night. Season 7 premiered, uh, and it is on every single Sunday. Bless it. Thank goodness it's back. It was way too long of a wait. 9 Eastern every single Sunday on HBO. And the gentleman who plays Samuel Tarley uh, is sitting right here on the set. John Bradley, good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Rich. How you doing? I'm great. You are one, I mean, out of all the characters on Game of Thrones, um, and we had Kit Harrington here last week who yeah. plays Jon Snow, and um, I think the two of you guys are the ones without any darkness in their hearts of anybody that is pretty much on the show. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, no I, I think there's definitely darkness there. There's darkness within all these characters. You know, Sam... For example, is a character that carries a lot of psychological scars around. Well, that's know? that's true. He had a very kind of abusive childhood, and he's very psychologically damaged, and he kind of exists in a world that he can't cope in. But your heart, though. But in his heart, he just wants to do good. Yeah, he's and he's got a very very pure heart, and and you know it, the problem with Sam is if you're told that you're a coward from the day you were born, you're going to start to believe it. Mm -hmm. But I think over the last couple of seasons, you've seen him stop believing that. So he's starting to believe just how worthwhile and brave and how courageous he can be. But it's just taken a while to strip away all those layers of kind of psychological baggage. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's darkness with everybody in Game of Thrones. It's just how they choose or choose not to let that affect their heart and soul. Right, but just in terms of rooting for characters. Oh, God, yeah. I'd like to think so. That, so. But with Game of Thrones, folks like you normally meet a very untimely grisly ending well that's that's the thing sam's survived this long against all odds yes nobody would have thought that he could have survived for this long certainly not at the wall i mean no no the, well, the he, wall eats folks like samuel tarley for for breakfast lunch and dinner well the, the wall is a very very kind of unforgiving place but the problem with that is that the wall is actually a safer place for sam than his home was because his father hated him so much that his father was perfectly prepared to kill him mm -hmm. in order to get him out of the way so that the favored younger son will have a quicker route to the seat of the house. But mm -hmm. so Sam is the only person who being shipped however many hundreds of miles north to be amidst cutthroat criminals and murderers. Mm -hmm. That's a much safer environment for him than sitting around a dinner table with his family. John Bradley, who plays Samuel Tarley uh, from Game of Thrones here on the Rich Eisen show. And then you're trying to become a maester. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. Now, Last year, at the end of Game of Thrones, we saw you show up at Old Town, and you're in this monster library, right? Yeah. And you're trying to become a maester and learn in all of this spot where the academics, one would think of all of Westeros, are coming in there. That's right. And now we see you starting off this season. I'm not, I don't think I'm spoiling too much, Brockman. Is it? Can we go there? I think so. Can we go to your first scene from from last yeah, night? Yeah, let's that do it. Fine. I mean, it's absolutely people fine by seen me. It? That you're cleaning out the latrines of, of maesters, right? Yeah. Is that what you're doing? You're clean, You're literally cleaning up their crap. Feed, feeding them soup, mm -hmm. and then, to put it politely, cleaning up the aftermath of the soup. <laughs> post, so soup and then post soup. Soup and then post soup is kind of, is kind of the cycle of life. Where, where the hell did that come from? It, is that part of trying to become maester? Is doing well, it's certain? kind of the bottom rung of the ladder. One would think. And Sam thought that he was going to go there and be immediately immersed in books and and fulfill his role and fulfill his promise to John that he's going to go there and mm -hmm. fight the same battle alongside Jon Snow. He's just going to fight it with knowledge and learning and education and mm -hmm. academia instead of with a sword. And that's why he appealed to John to send him to the Citadel, and that's why he's there. But I think Sam just imagined that it was a slightly shorter process than it actually <laughs> is. But, and and, and as, kind of, as kind of funny and... Mm -hmm kind of memorable and wacky as, as that sequence is, I think that it serves a very, very important function in that, in the course of the season as well. The fact that we, the first time we see Sam, he's extremely disillusioned, extremely kind of disenchanted, extremely frustrated, and he realizes that he's kind of been sold a lie. Mm -hmm. not, not, not been sold a lie, but he's kind of invested in a lie for so long. He thought that the Citadel was going to be this place of learning and this, this place where he could ascend to a higher kind of academic plane. And he's down there doing these disgusting menial jobs. And so it's like, it's like, it's like finding, you know, Santa Claus doesn't exist. Yeah. Or, or if he does exist, you're getting a, a dirty bedpan for Christmas. Yeah, post-soup, Santa's yeah. post-soup. And now we had 
again, Kit Harrington last week, he did not. He said that the the creators, uh, Weiss and Benioff, yeah. are sadistic people. And the question is, is did they actually put real, actual stool stool <laughs> in your scene? Is this what you were actually? having to deal with in real life no John they're, Bradley. no they're not that sadistic god bless them but okay. i think what i actually had to work with was one stage less unpleasant than that like it, here's a tip and every day is a school day after all if you if you want to create what we're going to politely refer to as stool mm -hmm. on the uh, on screen apparently uh, wet fruit cake oh wet fruit cake is the way to do it and of course wet fruit cake on the first take at 6 30 in the morning is fine <laughs> wet fruit cake at 3.30 after a day under hot lights becomes slightly less unpleasant than stool. Nine hours of wet fruitcake yeah. is essentially what you is were It's essentially doing. what I did. And, and that was a strange sequence to shoot because <laughs> we, we shot it in five second bursts over the space of a couple of days. Yes. And so I just had to make sure that I created those moments and trust the director and the edit and, the, and, and David and Dan that they were going to kind of stitch it together into this monster. But mm. I, I kind of had no real sense of the kind of structure of it when I was filming it. It's only when I saw it for the first time last week that I realized, oh, that's what they had me doing. That's why I was doing all that stuff for that week. Mm -hmm. When everybody else, everybody else, when I was shooting that on my own, mm -hmm. everybody else was out here at the Emmys. <laughs> I know. So maybe, maybe that sadistic thing, maybe you have a point there. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we're going to be back in 60 seconds, talk more Game of Thrones. It is as red hot a show as there's ever been in the man who plays Samuel Tarly. Uh, John Bradley is here, and uh, we'll talk a little bit of sports and some more Game of Thrones. I tried to get something out of Kit last week. He shut me down. I'm going to try and get something out of you. Oh, okay. okay. We're back in 60 seconds here on the show. Mm. If uh, Westeros had Wheels Up, it'd be like the dragon of Westeros. Wheels <laughs> Up is the spot that you need to go to right here and right now for your aviation solution in this crazy mixed up world called the 21st century. Guaranteed access to a fleet of over 70 aircraft with as little as 24 hours notice. It's time for you to up the way you fly with Wheels Up. It's the most intelligent private aviation solution. Fly find out more at wheelsup.com or call 855-FLY-8760. That's 855 fly 8760 game of thrones is back the man who plays sam tarley samuel tarley's own john bradley here on the show you are from manchester correct that is yeah your, that is your hometown That's manchester born and bred still live there born and bred so does that make sense that you're a man united individual i'm a huge man united fan okay yeah completely so what do you think of wayne rooney going back to his boyhood team in, in everton what do you think about that i think it's sad but i think i think in terms of if there was anywhere he was going to go back to I think people have the most amount of respect for him, the, the, the fact that he has gone back to his boyhood team and he's mm -hmm. not taken a huge payday in China or even the States, you know what I mean? He's gone back to a club that means a lot to him and he's, and he's clearly always been quite close to his heart. And, and you know, it's, it's gone a little bit downhill for Wayne over the last couple of seasons at United. He didn't play as much football last year as he probably deserved to. Mm -hmm. And... I just don't want people to forget just what a wonderful player he was. And I, I, I've been watching kind of his goal compilations recently. He scored some of the most memorable goals that Old Trafford's ever seen. And he's always going to be a hero. He's always going to be a, a player that's very close to the heart of the United fans. And he, he just wanted to end his, his career at a club that he loves playing regular football. And I think that, you know, nobody's going nobody's gonna to deny him the opportunity to play for Everton again. And there's going to be no kind of bitterness or guilt or recriminations if he ever comes back to Old Trafford, which he will. I'm sure next time he comes back to OT, he's going to get a rousing reception from the United fans because mm -hmm. he deserves it. Now, when you said he didn't take a big payday here in the United States, is that a shot at David Beckham? Was that a, was that a Beckham broadside? Oh, no, no, definitely not. Okay. No, no, no. I, I don't want to start anything. No, I don't want to mix anything up here. I but. wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare have a go at DB. He's another one of my heroes. But mm -hmm. I just think that Wayne, Wayne is a kind of homebody, I think. He's such... He, he, his, his roots are so firmly in Liverpool and his parents are still there and he, he belongs to that very kind of close-knit community. Mm. And Manchester's only kind of 40 miles from Liverpool anyway, but I think that his heart would always be there and so he, he I don't think he could bring himself to play abroad or even live abroad. I think it's so 
kind of en en entrenched in his fabric as a human being. He's never going to stray too far. And I think, you know, good luck to him. And I appreciate using the word miles instead of kilometers. You didn't make me do the math there. Oh, no, no, no. John, no. I really appreciate no, that, that's that you Americanized right. your conversation right there. I, I greatly appreciate well, that. Well, I'm, I'm from the the mm. old school miles, because we used to use miles. We still do use miles in the UK. I didn't know that. Yeah, can, can, once you get into continental Europe, they start to use kilometers. Oh, but, okay. But I think my, miles is miles. Did you see Manchester United out here in Los Angeles? They were just they're, they're just here this weekend. I didn't see them play this weekend, right. uh, but I, saw, I went to watch them train yesterday. What do you mean? I was invited to watch the team train. I couldn't believe it. Look at that picture. There's me and, and Jose and my pal Joe Dempsey. Look at that. Look at that. Greatest moment of my life, that, I think. Who is who is the biggest Game of Thrones fan uh, on the squad? Uh, Paul Pogba. Paul like. Pogba seemingly cannot get enough of Game of Thrones because he saw me across the lobby of a hotel and freaked out. <laughs> How often do you get that? Uh, from Paul Pogba. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not enough from Paul Pogba. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, quite a lot, especially now when the show's on. People, he's kind of at the forefront of people's minds. and Right. And there's something about also stepping out of something they consider to be a fantasy world and suddenly seeing you in the real world, there's something really kind of exciting about it, like something that they can't compute because they're used to seeing you mm -hmm. in, the, in the world of Game of Thrones and then they, they suddenly see you in a supermarket and there's something that they can't... Yeah, but but when, when you get your heroes, like Paul Pogba, who watches the show and, and he gives you that kind of... that rush of feedback and he's so positive and he's all over you and he's hugging you and he's shaking your hand and he, he's saying that he can't believe he's met you, it's moments like that that you think the world's gone mad. <laughs> world's gone crazy. Well, this this show is as popular a show internationally, obviously, um, than anyone that I can possibly remember. Yeah. What is the strangest? I'm with John Bradley, who plays Samuel Charlie of Game of Thrones here on the show. What's the strangest fan theory of the show? That they that somebody who is a fan of the show has come up to you and say, "I think this is going to happen." Well, the strangest one is that um, is that Lord Varys mm -hmm. is a mermaid or a merman mm -hmm. or a mer person, well, right? Just because, just because he, he he seems to get around the place relatively quickly mm -hmm. compared to everybody else. Like his movements are completely inconsistent with the kind of time logic of the show. So why? Who came up with the? Somebody came up to you and said a mer. Yeah, a, mer Whatever. a merman. Mm -hmm. And b because also, also, he's a eunuch, of course. Yes. And you never see him from the waist down, and he's always got these robes on. And apparently, <laughs> there's enough <laughs> circumstantial evidence for people to take it quite seriously. I mean, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's very, very flattering that people are mm. so invested in the show that they come up with these theories. But when, when it's the off season and you hear people say stuff like that, you think, oh, we better get the show on quick. Because these people are finding all sorts of ways to fill their time, and it's not healthy. <laughs> so let's get the show on and get them watching it before and any any the, there's any more of this. And you're going to Comic Con next. What is that like? It's down amazing. In Comic -Con, with Comic -Con. Game of yeah, it's amazing. What I find Comic Con always to be quite a moving experience because what you get is people who quite often I think feel kind of on the fringes of society a little bit and feel they lead a kind of alternative lifestyle, and sometimes they may not be that confident in expressing their passion for stuff like this. But what mm. you get in Comic-Con is everybody's the same. Everybody's as passionate about this stuff. And it's just a very kind of accepting place where everybody feels safe and they feel that they can express their true kind of passions and interests do in, people a, come in dressed, a very obvious way. Do people come dressed as you? Have you people seen People don't come dressed as me just because that costume in San Diego weather is not going to be wise. <laughs> I can barely cope with it in Belfast, to be fair. <laughs> but but no, you, know, you, do get, you do get Game of Thrones cosplay and stuff there, there are a lot of Daenerys because that costume lends itself to sure that kind of heat but mm. no I mean <laughs> if you if you want to go mm. and get some positive feedback for a show like Game of Thrones then Comic Con's the place to do it it's my fourth in a row and every year I say you know I've kind of done it now I've kind of had that experience but over time the kind of your ego level goes down mm. and you think I could do with a bit of a boost actually please that'd be great Comic so you John Bradley do you know what happens in the end of this show? No. Do you have a theory as to what happens at the end of this show? I have my theories. What is it? I can't tell you. Oh, come on no, now. No, no, no. If that's the kind of questions you were asking Kit last week, then I don't blame him for... Yeah. I don't blame... The thing is, we but don't... why can't you give what you as somebody... You, you because... Because somebody who's in the show, 
just to give your theory as to what you think. Well, you don't have a script for season eight yet, correct? No, no. But here's the, here's the thing about theories, mm -hmm. and this is why I'm not going to give you my theory today. Theories can go one of two ways. Either I'm wrong, mm -hmm. in which case there's documented evidence of me being wrong <laughs> <laughs> that, that you can then cut back to in two years' time and say, look how wrong this guy was. But what if or, we promise not to do that? I don't trust... Oh. I, don't, I don't trust anybody these days when it comes oh, to games. Oh, wow. Okay, what's the or? John. Or I'm right, and I've ruined it. You know what I mean? But if I've ruined it for people by being right. I've ruined it for myself by being right. Just, just you know, you know, it, you really can't win with that stuff. Okay. Because then, because then, the exact same piece of footage is going to be unearthed, and John Bradley spoiled the whole show two years ago. And everyone will accuse you of having actually Everybody known, even though me. you say you do not know what has happened. Everybody would accuse, would have accused me of knowing all along, mm -hmm. which I don't. And it's either going to be a lucky guess, or I'm wrong. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be a spoiler or wrong. When does season eight start shooting? Season eight's going to start shooting kind of towards the end of this year. I think there's no definite date on mm -hmm. that, but it's going to be weird to finish the show. I mean, it's a show that I've been involved in for. Seven years, my entire career. I don't know what it's like to be an actor and not be in Game of Thrones. So when it ends, it's going to be bittersweet. And everybody knows what it's like in acting. That The hardest part of acting for me is mm -hmm. meeting new crews all the time and meeting new casts and finding your place within that dynamic. And, and with Game of Thrones, you never had that because every year you go back and work with the same group of people who, right. you, who you know very well and trust. And we've developed a kind of rapport. I mean, people talk about how big the cast is and how spread out we are and the fact that we don't see each other a lot. We don't, we, we, you don't work with most people. Mm -hmm. But when you do come to events like this or Comic Con and you see each other, you really do feel like you're part of the you're same family. team. Yeah. So what can you tell me about season seven? I don't think I'm telling too many tales out of school that last night's episode appeared to be a table setter. It was a table setter, but okay. I, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think we, it was a good one. Do we get, no, I, Awesome. Yeah. Uh, this has nothing to do with anything about the quality. It's 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 wonderful. Yeah. But it appeared to be a table setter. How fast do we get answers in uh, season seven? It's a pretty fast season. Okay. Because we've only got seven episodes, and we've normally got ten episodes. This time we've got seven. But mm -hmm. you know, people shouldn't think that they're going to get seven episodes worth of drama. You're going to get a ten episodes worth of drama condensed into. Okay. Seven very rich and very kind of fast-moving episodes, I think. And the one thing you did spoil is Varys is not a fish man. That's what or I mean. Fish you see, person. I, 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 you have not. We could sit. I've ridiculed that theory now live on Rich Eisen. That could be right, <laughs> and, 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 and that, that could be right. Yeah, look how wrong John Bradley was about the Varys mermaid mm -hmm. uh, conundrum. Okay. By the way, we've had spoiler alert. The two people who have killed White Walkers on this show. We have. Yes, that's right. That's it, the gate. That's the. By the way, that we set a yeah. high bar for our guests here on the Rich Eyes. You've got to have us separately, though. It's like it, it, you, you've got to have us separately because one of us has always got to be on duty just in case there's a White Walker. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> it's like the way that you can't give the pilot and the co-pilot on a plane the same meal in case they both get sick. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. That might be an urban mipper. I think that's right. Oh, you know, so by the, by the way, makes sense. I hope they do, do do that, and I hope Valerian still doesn't make it on the flight either way. <laughs> no, if if that sword makes it on that flight, then there have been mm -hmm. th there are serious security questions. I agree. That have to be asked. <laughs> I agree. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. You bet. John Bradley is here. Check out Game of Thrones if you already haven't. My goodness, HBO Sundays at 9 Eastern time. You're welcome back anytime. Yes, I'd love sir. to come back. This Excellent. has been lovely. Thank yeah, you so you much. Bet. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app. Don't have any memory on your phone? Let's start to delete some of those slow-mo videos you have. And you know which ones I'm talking about.